Hey everybody, Dave here. For a long time, I have been making fun of recorder features in RPA tools. And Microsoft says that you can use the recorder in Power Automate Desktop to build the backbone of your flow. And then afterwards you go in and add your if then statements and loops required for more complicated automations. I didn't think I would believe that until I tried it the other day. And now I wanna show you how actually pretty good it is. The first thing we're gonna do is create a new flow. So I'm gonna call this test recorder and then the first thing we're going to test out is let's just do something super simple so i'm going to open up the calculator let's go ahead and click this record button i want to open this up and show you what it would look like if it were expanded okay so a lot of times it will look like this recorder uh, i'm going to collapse out a little bit so i can see both things on the screen at the same time i'm going to click record okay so i've got this little window that pops up i'm going to move it onto the screen then click record so let's click clear first and then let's click 12 plus 86. Now that is a little bit slow and it jerks my cursor around a little bit, but now that I know it's a thing, I know to wait for it each time. Then I'm gonna click equals. Okay, so let's go ahead and click done. All right, so here is our flow. It's very simple. Clear one, two plus eight, six, it did not record my equals, so let me do that. Okay, record equals and done. Okay, so now I'm just gonna delete the comments so I can see all the actions on the screen at the same time. Don't have to delete them. Let's go ahead and change the run delay to one millisecond and then run it. It should clear and then add 12 plus 86 and we'll get 98 with zero editing. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. I mean. Yeah, maybe if you have, or if you use an RPA tool that has a recorder feature, maybe you've done this before, you're like, well, yeah, of course, Dave. But you got to understand, like, I build production automations, and I have been doing that for the past, I don't know, since 2017. So I don't use recorder features, especially because I use Blue Prism. But I've used Power Automate Desktop for a number of automations, and I would never touch that for a production process. But this actually kind of works. I mean, I think that I would come back and adjust it some. But this is not bad, actually. So now let's do something that we'll have some complications in. Let me open up Notepad. I want to show you something. Sometimes it won't work properly. Like, I can't identify an element. And this is actually an issue with probably Power Automate as a whole. It's not the recorder feature that's the problem here. But I'm going to click Record and then Record again. I want to show you that I can click on this View button. And then I can click on this Zoom and then I want to click on restore default zoom. Okay, so the scenario here would be if for some reason you were trying to have an automation that would reset the state of notepad for you. When I click done and I go back and test this, you're going to see that it's going to fail on zoom and restore default zoom. And I don't have an explanation for that. I think it's just a bug in Power Automate. And a matter of fact, if you look at the recent release notes for Power Automate, you'll see that it actually talks about them trying to fix an issue with identifying the UI elements in Notepad. So uh, this is kind of a known issue, I think. It says failed to select option. Now, if one of you sees this and you're like, oh, Dave, I know what you need to do, go do this. Let me know in the comments. But let's pretend for a second that we can't identify that UI element. That's okay. We can still use the recorder. We'll just use image recognition instead. So I'm gonna delete these two. I'm gonna get rid of the comments and I'm gonna hit record. And then we're going to hit the three dots right here. And then image recording, we're going to turn to true. I'll click it again so you can see this is set to true. And then I'm going to click record. So the first thing is I'm going to click on view. I'm going to delete that in a second because I don't need it for image recognition. And I'm going to click on zoom. And then I'm going to click on restore default zoom. Oh, I'm going to actually get rid of this first one, like I mentioned, and just save these last two. Done. Now it's going to use the original way that we interacted with the UI element and then it's going to use image recognition to click the next two. So I'm going to click play. And it, it I'm not saying that this is necessarily a great idea to put into production, but initially if you're just trying to build out an automation and get somewhere with it, this works instantly. You, what you'll have noticed just now is that it didn't actually finish clicking this and I don't know what the reason is for that, but that's not a recorder issue. It's just move mouse to image and then left clicking isn't enough. So let's just change that real quick to a double click. I've also made the zoom level 
uh, bigger so that when we run this, we'll actually see a change. Okay, so view, and then it's going to click on zoom as an image, and then restore default zoom as an image, and now our zoom level is back to normal. I, I mean, that's, that's actually just impressive. Now, these are small parts, right? These are little pieces of an automation, but you can string these out and do tons and tons of clicks, and it's going to record a ton of them in a correct way, in a way that's valid to use. Now, will this work tomorrow or next week? I, I don't know. I suspect it's a good idea to go in and edit every single one of these UI elements. Let's go ahead and go to the next one though, and let's try this in Notepad++ where I can do a little bit more. Okay, so here we are in Notepad++. Let's delete what we have in here. Click record, click record again, and we wanna to go to settings, and then preferences. Okay, then inside of preferences, let's move this out of the way. I think we want to go to, let's see, dark mode. I love dark mode. I have uh, eye issues and I frequently need to put everything into dark mode so that my eyes can handle it. And yes, the lights in my eyes right now are the worst, but I, there's nothing else I can do about it. I can't record a video without some kind of lighting. So <clears throat> here we are. Let's just, uh, you know, move on. So let's click on light mode. And actually I wanted to click on dark mode. What am I thinking? And then I'm going to go over here and we're going to delete the light mode one. And then let's go to, let's say, delimiter. And we want to use default word character as it is. Okay, so let's just go ahead and try that. Uh, we'll go ahead and click the close button next. And then let's see, we could go to view. We could do the zoom thing. Let's do restore default zoom here. Wait, is that going to work? Restore default zoom. Okay, so here I like that. It it determined that it's a menu item, and so it recorded the full set of steps. View, zoom, restore default zoom. So I can actually get rid of clicking on view up here. And let's go ahead and just test this. Let's make sure this works. So we actually need to test changing these things though, right? We want to go to preferences. Let's go to light mode and delimiter. We'll set to this. Okay. So we've changed these things. Now let's go in and verify that it works. Okay. I'm not sure what just happened. It looked like it retried a click. That was interesting. Okay, so <clears throat> quite frankly, I expected it to fail. I thought that it was going to fail. I thought they would need me to rename the window title. And I think there's a chance that it would. If we, if we like, uh, did this, let's see if we did a new file. So now it's new too. Let's see if it fails. Yeah. I think that it's going to fail now. Yeah. Okay. So it says fail to select option, fail to get window. So what we need to do is go into the UI elements and, uh, we can actually delete the old stuff. Okay. In here, we want to go to the window level. And there should be a window title. Here you go. Name. I can just change this to a star. Now this has window name equal to with a star. I don't, I think we need wild card. So maybe I could, I guess I could do ends with. And then is that all we need? That might be all we need. And let's see if it works now on this uh, thing with a new window title. That's the only thing I changed, so you know, it makes sense that's the only thing I would need to update. Okay, so what that looks like to me, and I, I, I think I actually only recently learned this because I just use Power Automate Desktop for fun, but um, something I didn't notice before for a little while is that this element up here is actually used as the parent for all of these. So it'll be used as sort of the window um, identifier, and then these are the individual selectors for elements within that window. So if your window identifier is wrong, but your selector for an individual element is correct, like it's still going to not work. But it gave us a good error, so I knew what to fix. And that's all that was required. And so now I could go in and put in if-then statements to, in order to determine I want to do this instead of this. Um, I could, I might need to put in things like, let me check to see 
currently if word wrap is on because in this case we don't want power automate to just click word wrap because every time it's just going to flip it the other way right it's just going to flip back and forth so i think that we would need some kind of logic to read the value and i think with the recorder there's not really a way to read values that it that doesn't even make sense in that case because it's mostly about typing and clicking so the final thing i want to do is let's go to chat gpt because i think it's hilarious i'm gonna go and ask it to generate a web page for me and then we're gonna automate that web page and see whether or not we have to make any adjustments to do the things that we record our steps being uh, in automating that web page it's gonna be a local web page so i want to show you something with that too all right let's go ahead and ask chat gpt to generate a web page for us generate a web page for me that has several elements slash controls on it of various kinds when clicking submit it should it should just clear all the fields back to their default values oh man okay so it's not that hard to create a web page but i certainly couldn't have typed that stuff that fast so Let's go copy this and go to Notepad++ and I'm going to save it locally. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and save it as uh, sample.html. And then let's go open that right here, sample.html. If you were to do something like this, I want to point out what you need to make sure you do is give the Power Automate extension access to file URLs because this is a local web page and this is a great way to practice RPA for yourself. But you need to go right click on the Power Automate extension up here, manage extension, scroll down and allow access to file URLs. Make sure that's set to true. And then you can close the tab, go back, and now it's got access to this web page because this is a local file URL. So we've got a number of things we can do here. Let's use Power Automate to uh, actually, we need to delete all this, don't we? And then let's click record and let's just do some stuff here. Record. I'm going to click into the name field. I'm going to type Dave Morris. Then let's click into email and let's say Dave at Dave the RPA guy dot com. Gender. <gasps> Ooh, okay. Yeah, that's right. It pops up a menu to say, hey, what do you want to select? by extracting the values out of the combo box. I know that's not that hard, but it's still impressive to me. So just let me be impressed, okay? I'm gonna choose male, okay? My favorite color is um, green. Wait, what? Example. So this is a little unintuitive, I suppose. What we need to do is click pause, uh oh. C cancel, we need to pause. Okay, I, I looked up that teal, which is actually my favorite color, uh, is is this color code, but I, this is an RGB, so I'm not totally sure if this is going to work. Let me let me try this again. So record, where are we at? Record. I click this. I'm not sure if that'll work. Oh, it worked. Okay, cool. And then country, uh, USA. Yep. But we're going to choose Canada because USA is the default. So let's put Canada. Interests. Uh, we'll put sports. I like music, but I uh, can't play it at all or anything. So let's click comments and let's say uh, this is a sample comment. Isn't this really cool? Question mark and submit. Okay, so let's click done. Here we go. So this is going to not launch a new Chrome. Don't let that trick you. It says attached to running instance and it has uh, filled in all this stuff. I don't know if this has done everything, but we will find out in just a second whether or not it has. Are you ready for this? Okay, it's attaching. It's still attaching. Is it's a uh, oh there it goes. Okay, filled in. Oh, a mail. Oh right, that was the default. Or was it the default? I don't know. Favorite color, uh, country, Canada, sports, and it inputted. Oh, my, okay. Look, <clears throat> look. I thought, again, I was going to have to change something, but this time I didn't say it out loud because I thought, if I don't say it out loud, nobody will know, and um, then I won't look silly. 
but unfortunately I've already told you now. I think that this is pretty well proved that Microsoft is correct. I don't know how hard it would be to make a complex automation this way, but I suspect it can't hurt. It probably would only take five or 10 minutes to click through and perform even fairly complicated automations because what you're trying to do a lot of times is you have like 2000 different uh, say accounts that you need to perform procedures for and you record the set of steps for that and then what you're going to have to do is uh, most likely you will have to edit some UI elements in most cases I think even in this case I would have to I think I don't know I guess I could look let's see if we just pick one color no i mean it, it picked the id so this would just work every time but i think that sometimes you're going to have to edit ui elements i think it would just depend on how that website is designed or that desktop application you can see this is just a sequence of steps from beginning to end and it is missing two big things that i can think of and one is um decisions because sometimes you want to do one thing or another microsoft already pointed out you can't do that in the recorder that's just how it is and then also if you needed to get input data from somewhere, I don't think using the recorder is going to be the right way to go for that. You need to use programmatic means or, you know, you need to use the ways that Power Automate Desktop is designed to retrieve data from Excel or from wherever. And then you put a loop in place in order to loop over all of these actions. But the hard work of trying to interact with the page is already done. And really, all you need to do is just verify it. it's correct. And then you change it as you need. I'm going to say I think it's a little bit dangerous to do this because it's so easy to effectively copy paste something and then discover later on during production that you didn't build one piece of it right and it's doing something you didn't intend. So as long as you're careful to check everything, I think it's fine, but it is a bit risky. So be careful with how you use it, but at the same time, have fun with it. I think that anybody can go try this out and it will work on a number of different scenarios like I just pointed out. Most likely, when you go to try this for yourself, you're going to try it on an application that it doesn't work on. Just be ready for that, okay? That's just how it works. When you see somebody else go, hey, look how easy this is. You're going to go try it for yourself, and you'll be like, this, this is not easy at all. Just, you know, give it a chance. Try it on a few different applications until you see it work once. Leave me a comment if it works or doesn't work. I'm interested to know, also, how many of you use the recorder for automations you intend to go to production? I'm very curious to, to know that. Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.